Greetings, members one and all of the Salivation Nation. The recession is just around the corner here, according to Fortune magazine. That is, if you pay attention to the bond markets, and apparently they're sending a loud signal. But let's explore this, and maybe say not so fast, perhaps, because there's other indicators as well that we should explore about that. And that, who knows where it's going, but let's take a look and see. Now, coming from Fortune Magazine, this is saying that the bond market is sending a loud signal there was a recession on the horizon. Yields on 10-year U.S. Treasuries have fallen below yields on three-month government notes. With yields on the 10-year at 2.245% and yields on the three-month at 2.369%, the current yield gap is the widest it has been since 2007. Such inversions are worrisome since the only reasons investors would pay less for short-term bonds than long-term ones is if they fear the future is bleak. Bond prices and yields move in an opposite direction. And investors have sent bond prices soaring and yields falling on fears the economy is slowing and the U.S.-China trade war will drag on. We talked about that in yesterday's video. Those same fears have caused the stock market to slump a bit. Don't ignore the bond market's loud warning, but don't panic over it, say experts. Understand what the bond market is telling you and why, and then make your decision about your appetite for risk, said Tony Rodriguez, head of fixed income strategy at Nuveen, which has $989 billion in assets under management. The inverted yield curve is telling the broader markets that economic markets are weakening. That's a signal and you can't ignore it. The market is going to get ahead of itself in the meantime, but Rodriguez doesn't see a recession coming. If trade talks continue with no end in sight, rework your portfolio so it's not stacked with mostly high-risk or low-risk investments, he said. Stick to the middle ground instead. Move in the direction of higher quality and greater liquidity with a more diversified set of investments. Now, keep in mind, this is not coming from a precious metals perspective. We'll, we'll get there in a moment. Is the bond market an attractive place to put your money right now? Charles uh, Bob Rinskoy, Rinsk vice chairman of Aerial Investments in Chicago, doesn't think so. He said there's a number of top quality safe names in energy, banking, and healthcare that pay significantly higher dividends than the yield on 10-year Treasury, which fell to as low as 2.21%. He cited Johnson & Johnson, Exxon Mobil Corp, and J.P. Morgan Chase, each offering dividends that have increased steadily over time. Now was not a great time to put money into bonds. If you're afraid of the stock market, uh, then there's nothing wrong with cash. It's just not a good time to buy 10-year bonds. Uh, bond investors are worried about continuing trade tensions, and all of us are. It hurt the economy, forcing the Federal Reserve to cut interest rates to help boost growth. And that is something that is on, it could be coming on the horizon. That could be troublesome. Uh, Barbronskoy uh, said he doesn't see that happening thanks to subdued inflation, low unemployment, wage growth, and strong consumer confidence, among other factors. I'm a little bit of an outlier, he said. It's unlikely we'll have a rate cut unless we have real weakness in the economy. So they're going to be paying attention to that. So he thinks it may not happen. Um, investors got a reprieve from in, in recession fears with data out Thursday showing the U.S. economy grew at a revised 3.1% rate in the first quarter, beating the 3.0 expected by analysts. The Commerce Department had earlier uh, estimated growth of 3.2%. So that's good news. Bob Rinskoy is skeptical of the bond market's extraordinary reputation as a recession predictor, a recession being defined as two consecutive quarters of negative GDP growth, and we've not seen that yet. I don't believe bond investors have any crystal ball, and no one else does either, he said. It's very hard to predict downturns in the economy until you are already in it, and that's what happened last time. It was these GDP numbers that were revised uh, after after they were originally published. We didn't know until 2008 that the that the um, recession really had started in, in late 2007. Uh, so anyways, he says that 
it was hardly a pre, uh, prescient prediction that the economy would take a hit after 9-11, he said. It's been about three or four times in 30 years where the yield curve inverted and we got a recession. I don't find that particularly powerful. Uh, investors are no doubt hoping he's right. Hopefully, at least in this case, don't say the bond market didn't warn you. Well, it is a warning sign, so we'll see. But let's take a look at it from a precious metals perspective. And this comes from Kitco. Recession fears giving gold a modest bid, but more is needed, says analyst. And it's kind of piggybacks on the same article, but let's take a look here and see. This comes to us, sent to me by um, Silver Honda. The gold market is seeing a modest boost Wednesday as global recession fears increase in the marketplace. But analysts say that more work needs to be done if the precious metal is going to see a material shift in its fortunes. Further declines in U.S. 10-year bond yields falling to their lowest level since mid-September 2017 are helping gold hold its ground. But so far, the reaction to an impending recession has been muted, according to some economists. The U.S. 10-year bond yield last traded at 2.2%. Uh, meanwhile, June gold futures last traded at, at $1.28 an ounce, up 0.38% on the day. And here we can see those. Um, old Hansen, head of commodity strategy at, at Saxo Bank, said in a telephone interview with Kitco News that growing recession fears are positively a positive environment for gold. But for prices to break its orbit around $1,300 an ounce, Fear sentiment has to turn into reality. We need to see more uh, weak data points in the U.S. to highlight the risk of a recession, he said. Saxo Bank does not see a lot of good news for, U for U.S. Or, or global economies. In a report Wednesday, Steen Jacobson, chief economist for the Danish bank, said that the global economy is being hit with a double whammy of rising recession concerns and escalating trade tensions between China and the United States. The twin circumstances of an incoming recession and a massive trade war related breakdown in the global supply chain have joined forces to lean heavily on risk sentiment. And it is a risky venture. Uh, Donald Trump is, is, a, is picking a very delicate time in the economy, I think, in some ways, uh, to be um, engaging in this trade battle. But I think he's... He's, yeah, he's banking that hopefully we won't run into recession, but I tell you what, it's been a little while since the tax cuts have taken effect and the tariffs from the trade war is that balance is um, will essentially erase some of the tax cuts. We'll see how it plays out. Uh, on a related note, the Mexican legislature, I think, is going to be voting on the USMCA and hopefully if we get the Canadian legislature and the United States legislature to sign on, that will at least provide some reprieve. Uh, we shall see, uh, hopefully at least in some confidence in the economy. Uh, Jacobson added that the Federal Reserve is behind the curve and will have to move aggressively to support the softening economy. We see the rate, we see the, re the Fed cutting by at least 50 basis points by October, he said. Wow, now that's quite a prediction. Now, we saw from the Fortune article that, um, that he doesn't think it's going to happen at all, but it is a possibility. My guess is it will be a quarter point, not a half point. Wow, that's crazy. The CME FedWatch tool shows that markets are pricing in an 84% chance of a rate cut by December. Wow. Hansen said that aggressive interest rate cuts will eventually push the U.S. dollar lower and support gold prices. Yeah, and that's usually what happens. Hansen said that a grace, uh, uh, however, he also added that investors shouldn't ignore gold's recent dismal price action. He said that he prefers to wait for gold prices to show a sustained break above $1,300 before jumping into the market. He added that because of the growing uncertainty, many investors are sitting on their hands waiting for the right time to buy gold. Well, it's low. I think it's a good time to buy some gold. However, low bond yields are positive for gold. The precious metal still has to contend with a stronger U.S. dollar. David Madden, market analyst at CMC Markets, said that although the environment is improving for gold, there is still limited upside. Despite the chaos in equity and bond markets, we aren't seeing any, any major moves in currencies. The U.S. dollar is still holding its own and will weigh in on, on gold prices. Gold is marginally attractive in this environment. Jasper Lawler, a head of research at London Capital Group, 
also said that a resilient U.S. dollar is keeping gold subdued. Dollar strength is preventing gold from glowing under its safe haven status. He said it's a note to clients. Technically strong resistance can be seen at 1286, a high that gold has unsuccessfully tested for the past three consecutive days. And we can see at the very top here that gold is above that now. It is up $8.90 to 1288.20. And silver is up a dime to $14.50. Platinum is trying to recover from its big hits. Uh, still not able to break $800. And palladium is up. Uh, the biggest mover of all the metals here, $1,352. Uh, very interesting indeed. I think some of that might could be the reaction of the rare earth metal threat um, suppression that I talked about in yesterday's video. Very interesting indeed. We'll see how this all plays out. You know, the fear of a recession. I believe we're long overdue for a recession uh, under normal market conditions. But we do have some unusual circumstances, especially with the with the uh, trade war going on and uh, and and other factors, uh, geopolitical tensions, and the fact that everybody else's economy is not doing so hot, uh, for sure, makes it tough. Um, we'll see how this all plays out. Nonetheless, you know, I think we may have a reprieve for, before prices really start to spike up a bit, but you can see they are moving in a positive direction, according to what we're seeing here with these prices that I just quoted. And uh, with that being said, I think it's a good time to buy gold and silver, and um, and to stack what you can as you can as it's a, as you can afford to do so. And that's really the key: is this staying within your budget, be able to, to uh, jump in an opportunity to uh, accumulate gold and silver to uh, preserve your wealth. Um, so that's where we stand as of today. Uh, with the recession fears. Post your thoughts below. We'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to y'all for watching and encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.